Welcome to CEO Chronicles, the natural hair edition, where we will look into the businesses and lives of natural hairstylists, natural hair salons, and natural beauty. Hi, I am your host, Valeria Seurat. With so much negativity as the focal point in our community, we may ask ourselves, what can I do? And one of the ways that I've decided to give back is by supporting small businesses in our community. So today I would like to feature Elaine Lyles, owner and operator of Sister Butters. Thank you for having me, Elaine. Thank you for having me. Can you tell me how long have you been natural? I've been natural since I was born, actually. Came here curly haired. You came into the world curly. I agree. Into the world curly haired. <laughs> have you ever had a relaxer? I have once in my life had a relaxer. One and only once. Didn't turn out good. Uh, what do you mean it didn't turn out good? What happened? My hair fell out in big blotches all over. Was that your reason for going natural? It was part of the reason, yes. I um, realized that my hair did not take well to chemical altering and uh, decided to go into the braid, the protective style of braiding, and back and forth in that as well as the, the ultra style of pressing. But ultimately, the natural was the best for what me. What does natural hair mean to you and what does natural history mean to you? Ooh, okay, so through my research, we've been here for about 100, 100,000 years. And I'm sure we were natural then. I don't believe there were pressing combs or creamy crack. And we came here to America 1619. We got freed about 1865. So it was 246 period year period where we were natural. We didn't alter our hair. We didn't have time for all that. Be it slaves at all. So we then come into the 1920s where um, Annie Malone has shown up on the scene with her pressing comb and some of her products and then Madam C.J. Walker shows up with her products that she's bought some ingredients from Africa to, to, to offer to us and then there's also um, Garrett Morgan who created, created the Creamy Crack. So the conch came into fashion in the 1920s to the 1960s and we go into the 60s where we have Black is Beautiful and we're all in our afros and I wore my quasi afro and um, and here we are in the 2000s where we're re-embracing our natural um, crown of curls. So basically we just basically came back full circle. We came back full circle after realizing that black is really beautiful. I see that you have twist. Is that your go-to style? Um, sort of. In the summer, it's my go-to style. During the rest of the year, I do a wash and go. It's quick. It's easy. I use my four-step system. I use my earth cleanse to cleanse it. I go through um, the divine vinegar rinse to open my cuticles. I use the hair candy to feed it the nutrients that it needs. And then I, and then I um, cover it with the butter to maintain the moisture. Okay, so I have a question for you. If you were stranded on a desert island and you can only have one natural hair care product, what would that be? From my selection of products, I'm going to pick hair candy because it contains bananas and honey and molasses and uh, a lot of really good yummy um, foods you can eat. Foods I can eat, you know, so I'm going to be looking fly and I'm going to be full on the island <laughs> with the hair candy. Yes, yes, that would be good. Where does the word sister come from? From what I can remember, growing up in the 60s, I had a brother that was a Black Panther, and they began the vernacular of, to each other, hey brother, you know, how you doing my brother? And to the women, my sister, you know, how are you doing my sister? Even as a little girl, I remember grown men saying sister to me, hey little sister, how are you? And that just became a part of the culture of the Black is Beautiful. You actually did not name your product Sister Butters, but Sister Butters, and does that have a meaning? It does. Sista stands for Simply Inspired Skin, Toes, and Hair Butter. So that what it means in essence is that we've got you covered from head to toe. How did Sister Butter find its way to existence? I have, um, and I'm not bragging, but I have but two. <laughs> I have two bright, bold, beautiful, brilliant daughters that. You know, we're coming home from the mall, as most, most of them do at some point, with all these products and, you know, putting them all over. And I decided to look at them one day and, and read the ingredients and 
you know, decided this might or might not be good and did my research and realized that a lot of the contents of the products were not beneficial to them and decided because I am a mom that I wanted what was best for them and created some products that I thought would serve the purpose of them. You know, they didn't want to be ashy. I can relate to that, you know? <laughs> so I said, okay, let me go and do some stuff. And you know, I had to deal with moms cooking up her concoctions in the kitchen. Now, if I was feeding them, it was not a problem. Right. But you know, when it came to putting something on them, it was a different story and came up with some butters and that started everything off. Can you tell me what is the most challenging part about actually having a business? The most challenging part is one wearing all the hats. There's, uh, you know, there's marketing, there's, there's manufacturing, there's vendors, there's a lot of different pieces. But for me, really, it's about educating the consumer about alternatives to what's being offered to them in, in the mass marketplace. I want it to bring products that preserve the quality of their life versus the quality of the shelf life of the product. Why is that so important to you? Uh, what I've recognized is that there is a concept or a, a billion dollar machine in, in place to program us to believe that convenience is best for us. And so they give us the products that serve them in terms of giving them a cash cow. We consume them. The toxins and the ingredients over time accumulate. We end up in the medical system, which then throws us into pharma, which is a nice little loop for them. And from my perspective, I, didn't re I really didn't want to play with that anymore. I didn't want to play with my health. And I didn't want to play with the health of my daughter. So I see that you have several products here that you would like to discuss. Um, some of them are the Sun Rose, the Hair Candy, and the Miracle Pain Balm, yes. right? So can you explain to me what is the Sun Rose and what are some of the ingredients in it? Ooh, Sun Rose. Sun Rose is the core ingredient and it's a collaboration with Mother Nature and it consists of 26 sun-kissed ingredients. Mm -hmm. And they are synergistically designed to enhance the moisture, mm -hmm. to retain um, strength in your hair and elasticity on your skin. Can I try some more? Oh, absolutely. Please do. Ah. It's whipped butter. It's whipped butter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's glistening in the beginning, soft. but then it, it uh, penetrates your skin. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get um, the retention of the moisture and as well as the elasticity. Let's discuss um, hair candy. I like this name, but um, where did you get the name from and what are some of the ingredients in hair candy? H hair candy um, is called hair candy because it's a deep conditioner. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, kids love candy. Mm -hmm. My hair loves hair candy. Yeah. It's got bananas in it. It's got just not the banana, but the banana skins. Because when you look at the banana, the skin is what retains the moisture in the fruit inside. Mm -hmm. So I wanted an ingredient that would capture the moisture in the hair shaft and on the skin mm -hmm. and um, assist you in creating, you know, the, the flexibility that the hair requires. People from curly haired communities have very dry hair right, and yeah. the hair candy helps them to retain the moisture that's necessary. We also, it's also protein but there's a balance necessary between the two. This is the moisture balance. But this also contains sunflower oil, sweet almond oil, camaleo oil, as well as avocado oil, avocado oil and molasses. And that's all foods that you can eat. All foods you can eat. That's why if I get stuck on an island, hair candy is And the last product here that you have is um, Miracle Pain Balm. Yes. Okay. This is a miracle. It's a miracle. Okay, it's a miracle. So is this a hair butter or is, do you use this for your hair? What is this for? It was a necessity for me. Mm -hmm. I had an injury on my knee um, and I needed to have some relief. After a year and a half, I got frustrated and I had a conversation with Mother Earth, Mother Nature, and said, you need to give me something. And this is what was produced. So this is shea butter as the base. Okay. It has sunflower oil as a carrier, and then it has a number of nutritional minerals in it that our bodies are not really able to 
digest on a daily basis to take care of. But it's a topical um, application that you put on your knee or your elbow if you have ligaments or tendons or muscles that are sore that are prob giving you a problem. You just put this on and it alleviates it. What is Earth Cleanse? Earth Cleanse is a um, multi-use product. It is used for cleansing the hair as an alternative to shampoo. It's also used as a facial mask. Mm -hmm. It contains uh, clays for the most part, bentonite clay, which actually some people eat mm -hmm. yeah. to, to get rid of the toxins in their skin to detox their body. It contains rasool clay, colon clay, as well as a number of oils and oatmeal. What are yes. you gonna show us today? So this is a proprietary mix of all of those various uh, ingredients as well as the oil and honey. Honey is at the bottom. It separates itself from the oil. Okay, and it's gonna, once it's done, it's gonna look a lot like this. You see that? Wow. So you see the oil tips kind of yeah. separated, and it's it's pretty soft, and it just goes on the skin like that. You mix it up before you put it on your face. So what we'll do is we'll mix the um, clay that's already com composed in this jar, and I use my little um, mixer that I blend my smoothies with in the morning. Okay. And we'll mix the oil and the honey in. Just drop it in. Hopefully this honey will come out. We'll put the top back on. done. You can add in um, essential oils mm -hmm. if you have a you want jasmine or you like um, lemongrass or you like lavender oil. Mm -hmm. you can so this is in. the finished product of it? This is the finished product and what you do with this is you can either put it on your face as a mask or you can scoop some in the tub. Oh, supple sexy skin again. <laughs> and or you put it in a applicator bottle. Okay. So you would scoop out two or two tablespoons or so, put it in an applicator bottle, mm -hmm. mix it with water to the consistency that you desire, and then put it in your hair as the alternate to the shampoo. Oh. And it helps to define curls. Your ringlets really pop okay. with um, with the clay. It has been a pleasure meeting with you today, and I've learned so much about Sister Butters. Where can we purchase your products? You can purchase Sister Butters at www.sisterbutters.com. That's S-I-S-T-A-H, Butters. Or you can purchase on Amazon.com, as well as Etsy and Square. Thank you for watching CEO Chronicles. And as always, we encourage you to become your own CEO. Thank you for watching CEO Chronicles, where we inform, inspire, and educate, and we encourage you to become your own CEO.